Hi guys, Simona here from Vector Twist. Today I would like to show you how to create a vintage retro logo badge in Illustrator. And I want to show you some tricks because I want to show you how to create a gear here in Illustrator. So let's get started. First we're going to choose the ellipse tool and I'm going to set the stroke to black. So let me just switch it here. And then I'm creating a circle. Now keep the circle selected and let's go to Effect, Distort and Transform and let's choose Zigzag. Now here in the Zigzag Options window, we're going to set it to Absolute, the size, let's set it to 20 points, and the richest per segment, instead of 4, let's set it to 10. Now let's see what this looks like. So we turn on the preview here. Here we have our zigzag pattern around our circle. Looks good to me, so let's click OK. After that, we're going to go to Object, Expand Appearance. So we click Expand, and then we're going to create another circle. So I'm choosing the Ellipse tool. I'm creating a circle in the middle of our zigzag lines here. Of course, I want to select both and then select a line, and the line it's centered. And then I'm going to open up our Pathfinder panel here. Now here in the Pathfinder panel, I want to choose the Shape Modes Intersect. So first I'm going to select both of the shapes, then I'm going to Intersect and Apply it. As you can see, we cut out the top parts of our zigzags. Next, we want to create another circle. So back to the Ellipse tool, create a circle. And this time we want to cut out our little triangle pieces here, as you can see, this part here. So again, I select both, make sure everything is aligned properly. Then I'm going back to the Pathfinder and I'm going to choose Unite. And now we created our gear. Now this is the main shape, the outer shape for the Vintage Patch logo that I'm creating here. So next I'm going to switch the stroke to the fill. So simply click on our little swap fill arrow here. And then I'm going to choose again the Ellipse tool, choose white this time for the fill and create a circle on top of our gear shape. Again, I'm going to select everything centered. After I reselect the circle, I press Command and C or Control and C on the keyboard to create a copy to the clipboard. You'll see in a second why I'm doing this. I simply want to create another circle right on top, but instead of drawing a new circle, I'm just going to press Command and F or Control and F to paste the shape in the front and then just shrink it down. This time, I'm going to add a stroke of black. And since we still have the copy of the original circle in the clipboard, I can just add another circle on top. Again, Command and F or Control and F. We have a new circle. I simply with the 3 transform tool, shrink it down and add another stroke to it. I'm going to use the same stroke, so I can just use the eyedropper tool, select the circle with the stroke and have it applied to our smaller circle here. Now at this point, I want to create another gear here in the middle. So all I have to do is select my big shape here, create a copy to the clipboard, paste it in the front and shrink it down. Then I'm going to create another small circle, this time with the white fill, back to the ellipse tool, add it to the middle, select both. And this time I'm going to click one more time on the smaller gear shape. That means now when I align things, the shape will be aligned to the gear shape. And then I'm creating a copy of the small white circle to the clipboard. So Command and C or Control and C. Then with the small circle selected, I also select the smaller gear shaped one. Then I'm going back to the Pathfinder and I'm going to choose Exclude. Now this will cut out the white circle from the black gear shape. Unfortunately, the fill has been changed now to white. So I'm just going to switch it back to black. Now you might ask, why have you created a copy of the white circle? Well, I'm going to show you right away. I would like to add some elements inside of the shape that we just cut out. I'm simply going to paste that white small circle to the front. So again, Command and F or Control and F. Then with the shape selected, I'm going to choose this small icon down here, which says Draw Inside. Now anything I'm going to draw inside now will be clipped to this white circle. This is basically a faster way to create something within a clipping mask. So I'm going to choose the Pen tool. I'm creating some lines. Of course, I want to switch from white to black. And then let me zoom in. And then I'm going to duplicate those. I simply press the Option and the Shift key on the keyboard. I still have it selected. And then I, and then I press the Command and D or Control and D shortcut. And I'm going to repeat that line at the same distance as I first created. Now, if I drag this shape over, 
you can see that those lines have been clipped to our white circle. Now I'm going to zoom out again, and now I just want to add some other elements. I've already created another shape of some tools, so let me just paste that here in the middle, make it smaller, and since this retro logo badge is all based on gears and tools, let's create a bolt for the middle part here. We we'll right click and we're choosing the polygon tool. I click once on the artboard and I'm going to set the radius to 60 and the sides to 6. So let's shrink it down. Then I'm going to Object, Path, Offset Path. And in the pop-up, I'm going to offset it minus 3 points. I click the preview. Maybe I need to increase it a little bit. Let's set it to minus 5 points. And then I click OK. Now I select both of the shapes. I go back to the Pathfinder. And I'm going to select again Exclude. And now we created our bolt. Now we can move this into the middle here. And then we're going to switch back to the Ellipse tool. Add a circle behind. We'll set it back. We'll center both. Maybe increase the white circle a little bit and add a black stroke. Since I want to keep the stroke the same for all circles, I'm going to select again the stroke size of three points from one of the circles that we've created here via the eyedropper tool. And then all we have to do is just add some text. So I've created already the text for us, so let me just show you. And here's the text, also with some extra lines here in between. Of course, you could add another element, let's say another black circle, if we zoom in here. Simply select the ellipse tool again and create a circle here in the middle. So just select the circle, press the optional Alt key on the keyboard and create a copy onto the other side. And this is it. This is how you quickly can create a vector batch logo here in Adobe Illustrator. Now, of course, you can take it much further. So I just want to show you what you can create with these shapes. Here I've created logo vintage patches and you can buy them. The link is below in the description. I hope you really enjoyed this small tutorial and it will inspire you to create your own vintage logo badges and I'll see you next time.